order for Sean to have a voice beyond his art is his voice and it took a long time for him to um, be able to use that voice but unfortunately not everyone gets to see his art so his dad and I and his brothers and sister-in-laws have to have to kind of speak for him so Sean is pretty much nonverbal he can answer questions with one word statements but he's really shown us um, with his art how he sees the world and we we knew all along that he saw it in a different obviously in a different way that we did um, but his art has really opened some amazing doors um, for for Sean and and for us as a family and so there's there's some stories to tell so now I, I'm hoping we can play this sure. this will give you because Sean can't be here so hopefully this will you will see Sean instead of me for for this part So the, I mean that pretty that video pretty much tells um, a lot of a lot of Sean's story, but maybe I can um, um, add add to it with the I think with the next slide. So Sean, when Sean was born, there were no there was no diagnosis or no difficulties. I'm sorry, I'm probably right in your way. Um, that were that were noted, but one of the things that we noticed as he grew was that he was very particular in how he played and he, he lined things up and he, um, he was very orderly. He would go through books almost like he was reading every word, like at one, one and a half. Um, and we just thought, we kind of joked when he would line things up that he was probably gonna be an accountant. So he was so nice and orderly. Um, and then as he progressed, he didn't, he didn't speak and we um, did a lot of things like every parent who has a child with a disability and you go to lots of appointments and and you do lots of tests and you meet lots of people who are nice and you meet lots of people who are not so nice and um, we, we as a family and Sean himself experienced a, a lot of that but um, so we attended um, Renfrew Elementary and there he just didn't have a diagnosis he was just Sean and um, but when he was heading for school, it was it became really apparent that he would need lots of support, but without a diagnosis, he wasn't going to get that support, or he might not be able to attend school. Um, so he finally was diagnosed with autism at five, and it was funny because from the time he was three on, we kept saying we know he has autism, he has autism. We we've checked it out, and they were like, no, he doesn't have autism. We don't know what it is, but he doesn't have autism. And then finally at five, it was yeah, he has autism. Um, so off he went to school and we were blessed we've, we've been blessed Sean's been blessed all his life to have amazing people that have worked with him and um, he was in a special program at our neighborhood school and he had amazing people and it was there um, that they first convinced him to do what all school children need to do and, and that is pick up a pencil and um, he was not having a lot to do with it but he loved Disney and he loved Clifford the Big Red Dog and um, so he started drawing trying to draw the characters and um, like I said in the video <laughs> Sean decided one day that we should draw together and so he would pick a picture and we would draw I would hold I would hold his hand or support his hand and we would move it together and he would draw his his um, his character or whoever and so his art kind of grew from there and like it said in the video after a couple of years of that he he didn't like the way I always made everything really nice and rounded and I thought, I thought very like the way people looked and Sean would erase it and then he would draw everyone really skinny and really knobby with long fingers and long noses and I'd be like whoa okay and and um, so I kept saying to him you know we don't need to do this you can do this by yourself and it took we probably did another year with him erasing everything that we did together until I could finally convince him that I could sit beside him as he was doing it and he could do it on his own and he didn't have to spend all the time erasing. Um, um, so he kind of moved from there, but along the way there were, like, there were a lot of complicated things. After, like, elementary was really easy, <coughs> junior high was not so easy. Um, it was, it, by, by grade six, grade seven, it was really obvious he had a talent in drawing, or at least a, an interest, and he was very um, calm and quiet when he was drawing, and so we asked, or begged, um, the art teacher in the junior high that he went to um, if he could go to art class, uh, and they said no. 
um, that that he uh, that he would be too distracted or too he would distract people and I said but he's going with an he will go with an aide and if he if, if for whatever reason he would distract people they could leave um, and then and then she said well I can't change the curriculum to meet his needs so no he can't he can't go so we had a lot of battles so we just decided that wasn't a hill we were gonna die on and um, he kept on drawing and um, Everyone in the school would be, every teacher, other teacher, other than the art teacher in the school would be asking him to create posters for them and to create all of this stuff. So he didn't get to go to art class, but he did create art during that time. When he went to high school, he had another amazing teacher who introduced him and us to um, the art teacher at St. Francis High School, Peter Chung, and he just took Sean under his wing. And um, it was, it was, we always saw, art as a recreational form for Sean and a way for Sean to relax and a way for Sean to, um, to have things to do and occupy his time. But when he went to the high school program, he started, the, the, um, the teacher gave him this beautiful art book on famous painters and um, Sean would just go through it, pick a picture and he would draw and we knew he was doing this for a couple of years and we never saw his, we never really saw his, that art from the art class. We saw like his other, his kind of more recreational art and um, there was a, uh, maybe it was a year-end party or a graduation and we went to it and they said to us ahead of time, we, we did an, we have an art show uh, of Sean's art um, at this party so you, you know, you get to see all the art he's done at school and when we went, um, when we went in, I think we, we were probably the only people with our mouths wide open. Everyone else was like, oh yeah, that's Sean's art. And we were like, oh my God, that's Sean's art. So he had done, um, he had done, he did a Mona Lisa <laughs> and um, a lot of other paintings like so that he did and he did them with pencil and pencil crayon so when we saw that we thought wow this is a little bit more than just recreational drawing and people at the school were offering to buy his art and and um, we were just happy that he loved to draw he was finally could be in an art class and he could he could learn um, and he was happy and he still is very happy when he does his art so that's that, that story ends there and then he went on to options and we chose that program in particular because they had just hired an artist to work with the, with the people there and that man, Mike Ryan, became a, like the next mentor for Sean who moved Sean into the next, um, into the next area I guess. So Sean, um, oh the occupational therapy department said Sean would never have functional use of a pencil because he didn't hold his pencil the way you're supposed to hold a pencil. Um, and he still, to this day, doesn't hold his tool, you know, his art tools in, in, in an acceptable way for someone in occupational <laughs> therapy. But he learned how to adapt, you know. So, I mean, it wasn't, it was their judgment and that's fine, but um, I think he's proved them wrong. I'd like to send his website um, off to a few people. <laughs> um, so, um, so anyway, um, at, because he used, because he didn't hold his pencils right, he w he would rub, so his art often would have a lot of smudges, and it was how to get him to have the beautiful artwork he was creating, but not have it smudge. And um, they tried glo like gloves, and that sensory wise he couldn't handle, so he. Um, the the artist Mike came up with um, ultra fine sharpie pens, and so you can't erase. <laughs> you can't erase. And um, I think later there might be a picture where you can see him the black and white drawings um, and how detailed it is. So I don't know what's on the next. Um, yeah. So okay. So so when he was at Options and he was working with Mike, um, he had they had an um, an art show at a community center and again once again we were kind of really amazed at the response of other people other than family and friends to his art and it became um, it was really cool because we all went and Sean doesn't like a lot of people and he was very stressed uh, about coming here tonight I think he almost got sick on purpose um, so he, <laughs> but so it was very hard for him but so and he doesn't really talk to people so we we couldn't figure out how he was going to handle this and and we were probably as anxious as he was um, but what became apparent for the very first time was that Sean liked 
the attention when it came to his art. He doesn't like a lot of attention for anything else, but he does like attention for that. And um, as people were walking through um, the room, there was two or three rooms, and he he was kind of following people around and listening to what they were saying. And he's a big boy, so he, he's not like he was he he could sneak around. So I'm sure they knew he was behind them, looking or listening. Um, but at one point, people were asking him, you know, what is your favorite? Uh, what is your favorite art here that's here or whatever? And we're thinking, oh, well, this should be good. Like, well, you know, what is he going to say or how is he going to handle this? And and he just walked over to one painting and he said, this one. And we were all like, really? That's your favorite painting? Like, we live with you for all these years and we have no idea that's your favorite or whatever. But um, after about 20 minutes, he went and got a chair and he took the chair and he pointed right in the right where everyone would have to walk by him and the art and we were like this is a boy who like who goes as far away as possible from from people um, and here he is sitting there kind of doing doing his thing so that was like that was our first indication that regardless of the saleability of his art that art meant a lot to him and it was his it was becoming his voice and his way to show um, that he um, that he, he had something to say and something to share so along the way along with the options Sean also attended an indefinite arts um, classes and he also had a lot of support from the autism Asperger friendship society and so he's again once again it's the people that surround him that make made it possible for him to keep on moving forward and um, Indefinite Arts actually held Sean's very first kind of solo art show and he sold a lot and it was so exciting for our family and, and friends. Um, one of the issues that came up for, for us as people kind of, kept, you know, as, as it, his art was kind of being more and more refined and people were paying attention to it was whether when we talk about Sean's art and talk about Sean to anybody, um, do we talk about autism or do we talk about the art or do we t is he an artist or is he an autistic artist or an artist with autism and and it was something we hadn't really we just we see, we actually see it as one it's all the same he is an artist and he has autism and he's Sean so he's he's all three um, so we kind of just said we're just he's an artist we're just we're just going to carry on so we don't kind of we don't push one side or the other because we, we honestly think without his autism, he probably wouldn't be the artist that he is. So he's that kind of artist because he has autism. So um, along the way as well, like one of the things we did that really helped Shawnee think get noticed internationally was um, we created a website and it was not very good. But it was what we what we knew how to do. So he had a website and he had his art on, and uh, and because of that, he was noticed or or recognized by people. So there was an uh, uh, a speech pathologist in New York who contacted um, us to see if she could put Sean's art in a book that she was doing. So that was the first book, Drawing, Drawing Autism, and it's a really amazing book. that It only has about two or three of Sean's pictures, but it has hundreds of, of art from people all around the world that have autism. And then um, the second book, um, Artism, again, was, was more, it was all people with autism, um, again, well, I guess they were, bo they were both, but, um, yeah, so, uh, again, another, um, bunch of, um, art, so he, so, from those two books, then he, then people would see the books, and then they would go on his website, and then we started, he started getting invitations to show his art in different places, so, I think on the next slide it might talk about shine. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure. Well, I guess in 2012 in China was the year of the disabilities, or the and so they were celebrating people with disabilities. And so Sean was invited along with other um, artists with autism and, and actually any disability to um, show their art in Beijing. So Sean. Um, we knew that Sean can handle fly, flying to Beijing and, and handle the art gallery stuff. And so we, we just sent his art there. 
and um, the photos were photo uh, like that's his art that that is in behind these the children um, were on display I think for a month in an art gallery and then it moved all around China the art moved from town to town or city to city and in the end they were all sold and so we didn't get any back but but we were very happy that we didn't have to pay to ship them all the way back <laughs> so that um, so that was his first international show and that one was specific to autism them. And then, now this was the exciting one for us because, and, and, and every year during the, what used to be called balance, balance, balancing arts, right? And then, then the Spark Disability Art Festival, Sean had his art there. He also um, had his art in Glendale, New York, again, to do with autism. But I think it was right before Christmas, um, probably 2013 we got an email um, on Sean's website from an art gallery in New York now we certainly did not contact any art gallery and you know ask them to show Sean's art so we were kind of like what is this or whatever and they invited they invited him to to a show um, to, to have his art in a show in New York so it t took a lot of work and a lot of um, organization but his art um, flew there ahead of us and then I think we had an entourage of about 18 people who arrived and this this art show had um, no connections to disability um, so it was like his first art show that was based not not on disability but on on his art and the significant part about that like if you the picture isn't very clear um, but once again, he was hovering as the, as the hundreds of people were going through this. It was a really cool, funky art gallery and um, lots of little, little nooks and crannies. And there were hundreds of people there on opening night. And um, we had decided as a, as a group or as his family and friends that, you know, everyone would kind of, everyone take turns kind of, you know, watching out for him and, you know, keeping him happy and making sure people weren't upsetting him or he wasn't upsetting people or whatever. Um, so, and he, cause he's big and he bounces around and um, the, the New York Art Gallery people are not real keen on that. <laughs> they don't like it if you put anything down or touch anything or leave your purse on the floor cause there might be a bomb in it. And there were all sorts of really interesting things that happened there, but we were shocked. He, he, he had to get in a big artist circle and um, everyone talked, all of the artists, and they were from all over the world, shared um, their story. So his dad spoke for him, but he stood right beside his dad and very calm and quiet and, you know, took it all in and smiled at everyone. And we're like, wow, this is going to be amazing. But, but it was, it was more than that because he, um, we were so bombarded with people that that none of us could protect him because everyone was talking to people and so I would look over in a panic like where is Sean and there would be people talking to him and he was not answering back I don't think I don't know what he, he might have said a couple of things but they were they were so genuine and and what was really cool was they would look at his art and um, they didn't know he had autism and then they would read the the, um, his artist statement and you could see them like you know looking at his art and then you could see them reading this statement that was right there on beside it and then they would look back at the art again and then they'd look over at him and it was kind of cool to see people's reactions and he he appeared so you know casual and and nonchalant as he was leaning on the wall looking at <laughs> looking at people and we had never seen him like that he had never um he never would be like reacted like that and he didn't like getting his picture taken before he didn't like he didn't like attention and he had his picture taken, I'm sure, a hundred times that night, and he smiled, like a real smile instead of like that. He, <laughs> he smiled a real smile, and we were, we, we were just all in shock. People like that, our friends that were with us and our family, like were, were so am amazed that we could see our boy like just shine on his own, and, and, and we weren't there, but like we weren't able to get to him to protect him, and he was doing just fine without us. And um, 
And it, we kind of wondered, was that like a one-off? Was that just something that happened that day and it was like the stars aligned for him and for us? And, um, but since then, he, um, he photobombs every picture. <laughs> he, he never wanted to be in pictures. Now, you know, you're trying to get a romantic picture with you and your husband and all of a sudden his head <laughs> appears in between and it's like, really? <laughs> so he's really come out of it. He's really come out of his shell and he, He's so proud of, of his art and we watched his face as people were looking at his art and it was like it was like the most amazing touching thing for a family to experience and I, I wish he could be here and and I wish he could speak enough to tell you like what it meant to him and we're only guessing but we can tell by his his you know the way he was reacting and 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 like his pride that was just shining through so you know, we w I wish he could speak like you guys can, so that he could st he could tell his own story and not be his mom telling it. But I hope I'm doing him justice in in telling it. Um, I I don't know if you can click on that one and what it will be. It, it might. He was he was a feature artist in a thing in New York again, an autism um, an autism show um, where. So you might be, if you scroll, you can at least see a little bit of his artwork. So he was, um, he was um, written up, so they kind of chose him as like, a, I don't know, and the featured artist for this, for this program. So I, you might have a question as to like where he gets the, these ideas. He doesn't, he doesn't just, he doesn't just come up with them in his head. So he doesn't just draw whatever, he always, goes from a photo um, or a picture, but most, most times, so pe the people that have been commissioning him will give them a photo that's important to them, and then he does his thing. And he totally, it never looks like the photo. You can tell a little bit, but the details, that was his first ever landscape that he had ever um, done. Um, and so you can see like all the lines, like it's very much a, uh, line so he to this day he doesn't paint we always call them paintings but they're not their their ink um, both the drawing and the color um, this one I think is at one of the galleries here right that yes, one yeah this one's and this okay year, and, and that's John's so yeah, afterwards, you take yeah. Um, so yeah so again he's had such um, amazing supports um, and so much recognition from through the autism community um, to be featured in all these things and and then from each thing it was really cool like um, an art critic in New York saw his art at the gallery in New York and then um, nominated him for an art award and I'll talk to you about that later just um, be, it, um, so it's a big award in in the states but Canadian artists can even though it says they can't so we just got a phone call saying um, Sean's been nominated um, for this art award in New York um, and we just need your permission to whatever and we're like well who nominated him and found out later it was an art critic that had seen his work um, although he didn't win um, if he had won he would have had another show in and uh, a solo show in New York and some money and things like that but they um, strongly encouraged um, nominate like for us to, or other people or whoever to nominate over and over again that the people who win usually are on their second or third or fourth time but it recognizes people with disabilities and the, and the success that they have with art it's pretty it's pretty cool so the man who who provides the money um, was disabled himself he was hurt, I think hurt in an accident and so yeah so so yeah, so that was that. So from, so it's like, I don't know how New York found us, but through probably the websites or whatever, or maybe from the books. And then um, actually the people in New York didn't know he had autism at the start. And then from that, then there was the award and then the, um, an art gallery director from Vienna, Sashan's art in New York and then contacted us to have his art sent to Vienna. So Sean's had a couple shows in Vienna and then um, in a castle, which is really cool. And we really wanted to go, but we, we couldn't go. So, cause it was during my school teaching time. So anyway, he, um, from there again, so like the stars just align, the art gallery guy um, submitted Sean's art to um, 
the Louvre, um, and Sean's art actually was in the Louvre for a week. Um, uh, and, and now, it probably wasn't next to the Mona Lisa or, <laughs> or anything, like it was, but it was at the Louvre in, a, in, in an art space so there was um so it was an art fair or whatever so for a week or so he was there um and then um so he was he was at the louvre it was in um and then last fall he was in Swi it was in switzerland and then the um, the most exciting one as far as just kind of like in your head exciting well the louvre is pretty exciting well <laughs> yeah that, that one was probably the most but um he, um, his art was chosen to be at the Cannes Film Festival this last June and um, in a gallery across, like on the main place where the, all the movie stars uh, meet. Um, and we were actually thinking of going, but then there were the terrorist attacks and things and we were just kind of thinking, no, we can, we, we better stay home and be, so we can be here with Sean. Um, so yeah, so those are the um, exhibitions. Um, I think right now his art is back in the castle in um, Vienna and you know, we're exploring some more, some more options, so yeah. Oh, and we just thought this would, again, because he isn't here, it might be a nice way um, to end. And it's another video that will at least show Sean and not me, although I'm probably in it too. So that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> You're welcome. Any uh, questions about Sean's work for Nancy? Uh, how's it like to travel over in Europe? <laughs> well, um, Greg and I have traveled to Europe and we really like it, but Sean has not. Like his art, we had to send his art with and not send Sean <laughs> to the Europe ones. But, but New York, he handled the travel really well. Yeah, he loves actually loves the motion. Thanks for that question. He loves the motion. He loves flying. He loves trains and planes and any any kind of movement. So he travels very well. Thanks. Yes. Right. Oh, thank and you. although he didn't talk a whole lot, like you said, but um, he knew that I had a passion for dogs, and he used to draw me a dog almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I know he remembers you, yeah. Thank you so much, thanks. Can we go oh. one more? See, uh, I noticed tonight's piece, I was very attracted to. Oh, okay. Um, just such character in his character. <laughs> yeah. He does. He, d he does. So or originals at this point, what we've done is we sell originals that are um, that people commission. So anyone who wants a, sp a special picture done and they give them the photo, they can commission him and that. Um, but any kind of prints that, that you want of anything that he has um, can be either on canvas or, or frame, or framed print. Yes, yes. Actually, when we do the com when it, we've done the commissions, we've kind of said, you get the original, we get the rights to it. So, um, yeah. So just just because of, like a lot of his pictures, um, even though they're they're commissioned by one person, have a real universal appeal, right? Like so, it's not. Um, I mean, obviously, family. But he's done a few family pictures, and you're not likely to sell. But a lot of them, like the um, the picture he was working on in one of the videos, where there was a man like at a on a, at a river leaning back against a log. That man is actually um, a photographer for National Geographic, and most of Sean's early um, work that that you would have seen, um, at, like on those things, were done from pictures from National Geographic magazines, mm -hmm. and so it was really kind of cool that along the way, uh, like, and it wasn't because of that, but along the way, a National Geographic photographer found him and really like, so he's commissioned him. I think he, Sean's on his fourth piece for that, for that and particular. Does it tend to be the same size? The one he's working on, the one behind you, are both the same 
It, he usually does like 11 by 17s or 11 by 14s, and he has done a few bigger, and he has explored a little bit in oil or, or acrylic, um, but, but he's just beginning that journey. He has um, he has way better control, like and with and with the fine and his whole art. His, I think his his style is very much the lines that he shows, and um, so he would lo he loses that with the brush. So Oh, I like, you know, um, but yes, like his website is just shambalanger.com and, and he does Christmas cards and art cards and all, like any, anything. Yeah, so I invite you to certainly look. Mm -hmm. When we saw him in one of those clips, I think he rotated the piece at least twice. I noticed that Maybe too. More. Does he start in, if, if it's all the little circles and mm -hmm. stuff like that? That. Where do you start? When and you know, how does he expand it across the page? Exactly. Well, one of the things that we asked, like as we saw his art coming home, like done, so we never get to see that kind of art being done at home. He still he draws at home, but it's very um, cartoony and and you know very small little things. So. Um, so we too wanted to see, and so we've, we've actually asked them along the way to always, before he starts putting color, to photograph it, or to photocopy it too, so we can see. Because when you see it in black and white before the color, it's an entirely different experience. But he does it different, because um, we asked that, how does he start? Does he start in the corner? Does he start in the middle and work out? And they say he's all over the place. Like sometimes he starts in a corner, sometimes in the middle, sometimes like here, he'll draw three little things and then he'll go over to here and draw something else. And the, the picture- That's what it looked like he was doing. Yeah. From there to here. Yeah, and the picture that they showed, um, and I probably, inter when it first started and it was um, like kind of burgundy color in the, and a street car, that's, um, a picture of Hanoi um, and it was when um, when they gained their independence or it was after a war or whatever and um, the coolest thing we, we, we love that picture because well one the colors are, are incredible but that was a National Geographic and it had script it had typing words actually on the photograph and he actually included all the text and the page numbers on the picture which he had never ever done so I don't know but at the bottom, there was a um, boy or a man on a bike, and he couldn't fit the tire in, um, so he just flattened it. Like he just, um, you know. And for Sean, like he worries about other things, but it doesn't see, it doesn't bother him, you know. Or to only have four fingers instead of five, or to have, you know, the the thongs on their feet go, you know, between the last two toes instead of the first or whatever. He just kind of does his own, um, his his own thing. So, and there's a real progression, like on his website, um, you'll see, like you can tell which ones are early, are early picture, earlier pictures and, and which ones are, I think anyway. So, so yeah, so he, yeah, he's all over the place in, in how he draws, but um, there's one, I don't know it'll, if it'll come on, but it's um, a jazz band, uh, um, Preservation Hall jazz band, and it was a commission and, um, there's stone, like it's all wood and then stone, like there was stone fireplaces and he drew every circle. Like it's not like a bunch of swirls, like everyone individually. And the artist that was working with him at the time during those times, like he said, if there's rocks on the ground and there's a million rocks, he will draw a million circles or whatever if he could fit it on the page. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I was just wondering that, um, I guess he works on like one piece at a time. He does. He, no, you know what? He he has not. We a couple times we've been able to um, convince him to set aside one to do another. Just like usually it was because we wanted a new Christmas picture and we were running out of time, and it was kind of like, well, if you want a Christmas card, we need you to do it, and he's okay with that. The other thing that we thought was really cool is we kept all his originals because we thought, again, we're just. We're, we're, think, we're trying to guess what he would like, and we were thinking maybe he doesn't want to sell his originals unless it was commissioned because he chose that picture for a reason. But he's very comfortable with when people come to get the picture of just handing it over. It's like, yeah, bye. It, for him, it's the process. It's the, yeah, I think. We, we hope. We hope we're getting it right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you so much.